We learnt in the previous video that certs, in other words, square roots of non-perfect squares, cube roots of non-perfect cubes, etc., etc., are irrational numbers. And therefore, they cannot be written as a fraction. And as such, whenever we work out the value of a cert, what we are actually doing is estimating or finding an approximate value. So for example, if you punch into your calculator the square root of 10, the decimal answer that you get carries on and on and on. Those decimals go all the way to infinity. You can only see the first seven or eight depending on how many digits your calculator displays. So you actually end up rounding off that number. So in, in other words, you are estimating what the value of the square root of 10 will be. So because we estimate the value of thirds, it is often useful for us to know between which integers a third will lie. Okay, so for example, number one, between which integers does the third square root of 92 lie? Now, in order for us to figure that out, what we need to do is put the square root of 92 in between its closest perfect squares. So we have to figure out what is the perfect square just to the left or just smaller than 92 and what is the perfect square just after 92. So you should know your squares um, from grade 9. So you should know that 9 squared is 81. 81 will be the closest square to 92 that's smaller than it. And the next perfect square will be 10 squared, which is 100. So the square root of 92 will be bigger than the square root of 81, but it will be smaller than the square root of 100. In other words, it will lie in between 81 and 100. So the square root of 81 we can find, it's 9. And the square root of 100 we can find, it's 10. So in other words, the square root of 92 lies somewhere in between 9 and 10. It will be 9 comma something. All right. The negative cubed root of 200. So now we're dealing with cubed roots, but the process is the same. We want to figure out between which two perfect cubes does the negative cube root of 200 lie. And we need to be a, a little bit careful with this one because we're looking for the negative cube root of, of a number. And with negative numbers, we have to get our mind around the fact that the larger the number, if it's negative, the smaller it actually is. So if we think of 200 and we think of the cubes, the perfect cubes that are around 200, let's start with 4 cubed is 64, 5 cubed is 125, and 6 cubed is 216. And again, you should know those cubes, and if you're not entirely sure of them, you can um, always refer back to your tables that you've got from grade 9 that show you your squares and your cubes. All right, so 200 lies somewhere in between 125 and 216. Because we're dealing with negative cube roots here, the negative cube root of 216 is going to be smaller than the negative cube root of 125. In the same way that negative 10 is a smaller number than negative 1. It's to the left of negative 1 on the number line. Okay, so the negative cube root of 200 will lie in between negative 6, because the cube root of 216 is 6, and negative 5. Okay, so that is how you estimate the integers between which a third will lie. You have got some examples in your homework book to try, so please pause the video and try these. Number one, the cube root of, of 126. So we want to figure out what numbers that lies in between, cube root of 126. So we need to find the two perfect cubes on either side of 126. And on the previous slide, we made a list of our cubes and we saw that 5 cubed was 125. So that's just less than 260, uh, 126. And the next one will be 6 cubed, which is 216. So the cube root of 126 will lie in between 5 and 6. And you can see that it's going to be very close to 5 because 126 is only slightly bigger than 125. Number two, the negative square root of 301. So we want to see which square root that lies in between. All right, your perfect squares, and you might need a table of squares to help you with this one or a calculator if you don't know your square uh, perfect squares up to 20. 
if you start listing your perfect squares, 17 squared is equal to 289 and 18 squared is equal to 324. So 301 lies in between 289 and 324. Okay, so we need to just remember here that we're, leaning, we're looking for negative square roots. So the larger number will actually be the smaller one if we make it negative. So it will lie between the negative square root of 324 and the negative square root of 289. So it will lie in between negative 18 and negative 17.